Hi, man, Drop Strong, and welcome to the Back of His Teardown Lab. Um, a while ago, I kind of promised myself and the channel that I wasn't going to do any more unboxing videos because really it's the easy way out and I could just do endless unboxing videos with the stuff I get. However, I, uh, as you can hear, I'm still pretty ill. Um, so uh, I kind of really have not got the energy to do too much. I've actually just laid, I think, about... Oh, 60, 70 square meters of carpet tile in my house, like an idiot. So my knees are wrecked, my head is full of phlegm, and um, I ache all over. So uh, I think it's a, if, if there's any excuse for me to do a video that's an unboxing video, today is the day. So this, interestingly enough, I'm going to try this a bit later, is a micro SD card. It's a two gigabyte one with a very wonky label, as you can see. Uh, this is from China. And literally, I bought it directly from China on Amazon. Um, it took a while to get here. But you're saying, why have I ordered this particular one? Well, that's because this one isn't a HC, high density or high, high speed card. This is not an HS or an HC, uh, sorry, high capacity. And the reason being, if you're using a Satan interface, one of those um, Atari ST Satan, not the Ultra Satan, the older one, um, it can only handle up to two gigabytes, but not in the HCHD format cards, because I've tried those and it doesn't work. So if you want to get the most performance out of that and you want the most space, to, which is two gigabytes, you need a standard card. Now, speaking to uh, the chap who does the driver, I can't remember his name, I do apologise. He said some people have managed to get hold of four gigabytes cards which aren't uh, in the HSHD thing because he updated his drivers. I bought the drivers for it. I think it's, it might be HD driver or oh, it's the other one anyway. And uh, apparently you can. So if you want to get the four gigabytes working with your Satan disk, it's feasible. But have a look at my previous videos on that. Um, that worked out really well. We'll be covering the Atari ST Satan interface soon. The next item is this uh, mystery item. Now this I think was prompted on Discord, someone said, oh Andrew, you want one of these, and like an idiot, and I say like an idiot because I've got so many of these and I don't do anything with them, my house is full of these bloody um, dev kit things. Have a look, let's see what I ordered. So it says it's the ESP32 cam, so I was somewhat interested in the ESP32 because I do use the um, ESP12 uh, in a lot of projects. And uh, there it is, it's the ESP32S, and that's an AI Thinker module. So very similar to the ones, the original chips we used in the RetroNet. Since replaced with some other clone knockoff ones, where I guess they knocked off either AI Thinker or AI Thinker and knock off someone else. Who knows? I mean, they're all buying the cores from somewhere. So this is the main chip, plus it looks like a 3 3 a 3 v 3 v 3 regulator, a reset button, a tant cap, an LED in there, so some power circuitry and an indicator. And what's this little bad boy here? Um, I can hardly read it. I'm going to hold it up to me eyes one moment. Um, IPS 640. O four L S O, L S O. That's cute. Interesting. Interesting. I really don't know what that is. And then on the back, there's a micro SD and this thing, which I presume is the interface for this camera. Now I don't know the resolution of the camera. I don't know the spec of the board. I don't even know how you bring up the bloody thing. Um, oh, I can tell there's some sort of LED there on the back, which is kind of cute. Oh, that's that's probably an illuminator. That probably goes in like that. And then you could 3D print something and stick that whole module in it. And probably all you need to do is actually just give this power because you'll be able to talk to it over the Wi-Fi or if you have an antenna, clip that in there. So that's kind of groovy. So yeah, I don't know. I, I, I kind of think I want to say it was like a few quid. It wasn't like a massive amount of money. It was probably like a tenner. Um, but, you know, don't hold that against me if I'm wrong. I really am not in a fit state of mind to know right now. Um, and we just pop that in like that. Again, I'll just show you. Show you what I did in case you missed it. There's the little door doodad there. I just flip that open, pop that in, and then I'm just going to flip it closed. And there you go. Locked in. I guess with a little bit of glue. Because that's not going anywhere else. You're not mounting that camera anywhere else, right? So just glue it there. And I guess this could be quite cute for making a little uh, 
a Wi-Fi cam or security type camera for your uh, maybe 3D printing or your front door. Maybe you want to have a peephole cam. You could make a lot actually with that, couldn't you? It's such a small package. And I guess the reason they put the camera module off was because it doesn't fit in the packaging any other way. So I'm going to put that away safe, just so I can shove it in the drawer with all of my other uh, MCU dev kits, uh, which I sometimes I even install the tool chains to be honest um, I really uh, say okay I'm gonna do this let's do this and I install the uh, tool chains and everything in there and uh, that's probably about as far as I get really run a hello world or take their hello world code compile it and then just uh, okay good done um, Incidentally, I do have a book coming because I probably will. If you remember, we made the booby cortex. I probably am going to do a respin of the booby cortex board in the not too distant future. So uh, stay tuned for that. I really, I know I promise a lot of things, but um, it's one of the more firm promises. Now, oh, there's something here in this envelope. But I'm going to show you that at the end. Now, Sad Ken on Discord, if you know the old Sad Ken, Andrew Beer, he sent me something quite wonderful. Um, I kind of forgot about it. Again, he asked me when I was in my dazed uh, state, uh, my flu fugue, and uh, I just said, yeah. Then this box arrived, and I was like, oh, what's this box? Who's sending me a box to my house? You know, as you do when you have an unexpected package. Um, and this is that box, and we're going to have a look inside it. And remember, I, have, I had kind of forgotten about this, so it's almost... I can't, I know what it is, but I don't know what it is. Do you know what I mean? It's like, uh, just a description. <sighs> da, da, da. And it's better than I could have imagined. It is better than I could have imagined. Let's just get rid of the box of paper. Your papers, your papers are valid. Wow, look at this craziness. So there you go. Can you guess what it is? It's got a Viglin and it's got a 40 or 80 were they sectors or tracks? Tracks, 80 tracks. Mm, look at this bad boy. That's of course, look, oh. Oh, it's even got the card in it. How heavenly. This is of course a BBC micro floppy disk drive. Look at the cables. This is bonkers source. What's going on here? Yeah, so look, this cable is obviously a power cable and um, it's very interestingly wired, is all I can say. Um, I don't know if that's how they came out of the factory and uh, or Andrew's just cleaned this up, but I guess it does the job. It looks like two lots of speaker wire. It doesn't look like there's any ground wiring on that. Um, not sure if you need that shielding wire. And then this plugs into the user port or the floppy disk drive port rather on the bottom of the BBC Micro. That's why it's so long. There are a lot of nicks and dents and kinks in this, but... I suspect it's okay. I mean, it would be okay. And then there's some lovely felt pads and it's got that really great color. A bit of a split there, but we might be able to just do a bit of glue on that. And uh, that's that's needs on this retro brightening because even for a BBC Micro kind of yellow, that's a very yellow. Now, along with this, he did give a box of discs. So let's have a quick look in the old box of flops, shall we? That's why I'm calling them now, flops. Because I've never ever called them flops in my entire existence, but it just seemed right in this video that we're going to coin a new term. Just for just to confuse you kids. They're called flops now. And uh, this box was a little bit crunched in the post. Beggars can't be choosers, I'm not going to complain. So what I did there is I just put a little bit of the old super glue and held it all together. And now I've got this lovely patina. A bit like one of those resin art YouTube channels that do lovely resin tabletops. Now... I'll put the lid aside. As you can tell, it is quite handy the way the lid comes off, especially for reviewing discs, or reviewing the contents, rather, of a box of discs. So I'm going to put this on the side. And let's have a look. I'm just going to just grab out a fistful. Um, let's go let's Go for a fistful at a time. There's our key as well, to lock them away from those prying kids, those cheeky prying kids. So we have something here. It says N Rider. Knight Rider, perhaps? N Rider, that's exciting, isn't it? I hope it is Knight Rider. Oh, but is, oh, is this a PC disc? ATI 3D Rage Pro, two times driver, okay. Windows 3.1 setup discs, five of seven. <gasps> Windows 3.1 setup disc, one of seven. Oh, we better keep those over there. Maybe we'll get some of that, a blank disc. 
or a, a nondescript disc. I suspect, judging from the lack of other floppies, um, we're not going to have our Windows 3.1. Though we have Norton System Works Emergency Disc 3. I love that. These are so random. They're just, just literally random selections. Now, I have got boxes like this as well of floppies, so maybe we can uh, map some together. <gasps> okay, so I don't know this one. It's Hopper. Hopper sounds good. Like a clone of the old... Uh, um, mm -mm -mm. What the frig was it called now? The frog game. I guess maybe that was Hopper in the arcade. But look, Granny's Garden. Mmm, Granny's Garden. And look at these discs. Doesn't that notch look weird? That's a weird looking notch. If anybody has some notch expertise, will tell you. And they look at that notch. That's really weird because it's really chamfered. Is this manually clipped? Who knows? Gla Granny's Garden. I always said Glanny's Garden. And no, then no, no, Granny's Garden. Okay. Uh, X fur. Blank. <gasps> bit bent, but here, look, Bee Bug Members Pack. God, I remember sort of Bee Bug. It was sort of advertising the magazines. Bee Bug Soft, yeah. Wow, St. Albans. We have used our Bee Bug blank disc to hold your new Members Pack programs. If you are pleased with the quality, why not check the prices on the back of your Bee Bug magazine? But look at the old disc there. It's got a bit of a warp. Hopefully that will work. If not, we'll, uh, we'll try to get the... Um, contents off this and archive it somehow it looks like it's just i don't know it's, it's not sitting warped in the box so i guess just maybe that label did something to it repton format pipeline blanky blank 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 i like this one though what the heck is this one it says m star n star p star l y Ian A. Skelly, published by Richard S. Ball, 1984. Crikey, that's a mysterious disc, a disc of mystery. Put those there next to my magnets, and we'll just keep going through. Uh, I don't, hope you don't mind if we're just looking through. There is something coming up at the end I want to talk to you about. So, Slick. Slick sounds good. Disc 1, 40. Disc 2, 40. 40 tracks, I'm guessing. So these discs do have numbers on the top uh, right corner, I notice. So there's just sort of random. Mapsoft products. Something to diskettes. 52 graph. Oh, graph, eh? Look at that. 11, 12, double-sided. It's just... I don't know if anybody actually just had these um, logged in anyway. Because we can see this one says Hopper and it says 16. Or if they're just random. So maybe we'll find a catalogue at some point. Oh, there's some more here. So you've got Slick by BJ Computing, Solidisk 17. Circuit Designer, so that's cool. I need some Circuit Designer. We can put away that bloody eagle. Now my first CAD experience making my own PCB and Circuit Design was on a BBC Master. So, ah, oh, if that is the same software, I'll literally wet my pants. Mini Office, Frack, <gasps> Magic Garden. Blankety blankety blank, blankety blankety blank. These might not be black, by the way. We're going to check these out at some point when the beep's up and running. Another one. Another one that looks blank. But there's a piece of paper here. And it, Andrew, is this your writing? Is this your uh, pen? It kind of looks like a uh, photocopy. It is maybe a photocopy and very thick paper. But these look like the sort of commands you get from some of those, you know, every now and then you'll get a random debug utility ROM that you put in your um, BBC Master or Micro to help you do some coding or whatever. And uh, they always have these random commands and you kind of type in help whatever. And uh, if you're lucky, you'll get some sort of help. If not, you just won't know what these commands are. And it's really weird. They missed a trick, I think, with that slightly in that it's not quite married up, you know, when you get the commands and being able to see what they do. Oh, there's another one, real quick. Let's have a look then. Comstar, Help Prom, Black BBC, Xmon, Toolkit, Pascal. So ROM disk one. So there's a whole load of stuff thing. So I don't know if they're sort of um, images from ROMs, so you can burn them back onto the ROMs, something like that. V view view calc view file interactive 3D ooh back up at that though one sound the micro at work BBC version users should also note that the right protect tab should not be used on this discs okay fair enough micro at work travel agent air traffic controller and there you go blank blank 
something that says replica in really fine writing. Disc master. Blank, 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 blank. Ooh, and there you go. View type. Program by Mega Megandrick. Megandrick. Mm. So I don't know if these sounding uh, a little bit schooly or not. Because um, remember, these BBC micros were used a lot in schools. But you know, we're going to go through them. Of course, I have masses and masses now of Atari ST public domain discs, like way too many. And uh, that's also a bit why we have the SD card earlier, because people are saying, oh, are you going to back those up? And I'm like, oh, I can't back them up to my GoTech, because that would be like literally copying a floppy to a floppy. So now if I can figure out how to um, get something that just copies uh, disk images to the hard disk, I'll be able to make some hard disk images, pop the SD card in the PC, bish, bash, bosh, away you go. You've got your public domain disks preserved forever. Let's have a look through some of these. Mm -mm -mm. So, Vigland Utilities Disc, very nice. Trumper's Way, Hanwell, Trumper's Way. <laughs> MGB, MGB Utilities. So, there's your utilities for your MGB GT Graph Disc 40 track. I love how they've got these things you've got right on them 40 track. That literally would probably double the space between the 40 and the 80. Interactive 3D. Ooh, what's this one? Master CPM disc. Now, um, Ian from Monster Joysticks uh, gave me an interface I think that was given to him by Chrissy, which is a uh, like a tube interface CPM type thing. And to get it to run, you needed two floppies because it, would, uh, it came with two floppy drives and it would load a CPM system on a BBC Micro. I'm wondering if that's anything to do with it. That would be useful if it is. Inform, formatted, <laughs> with inform travel on it. Paint, no, print, print inform database. So there's lots of inform stuff going on. We've got inform in the town. Oh, there you want some super Morse. They don't even teach that anymore, do they? If you join the old Navy, we don't need Morse code anymore, but some people might want it. <gasps> oh, I think I had this. This one I think I had. You see here, Fleet Street Editor. And look at that. Side A and side B. <laughs> I had this Fleet Street Editor. Gosh, I'm going to be uh, really looking forward to trying a sort of a Mirasoft title, a proper Mirasoft sleeve. The, not one non hooky disc among all this. Um, again, Imac. Do you remember Imac and Verbatim Data Life? Oh my word. So evocative, these bloody discs. And it's not just because of the BBC Micro, because I had, uh, obviously, floppy drive as well on my BBC Micro. But, uh, of course, PCs. We had the PC, early PCs had those for a long time. Oh, oh dear, look, RGP Microsystems disc hasn't got a sleeve, so we'll pop that in. Just so you're aware, by the way, if you haven't seen these, you haven't taken them out of the sleeves, um, there's just like a, imagine a disc that's made out of cassette tape material that looks a bit like a CD, but it's just more more like a mini vinyl record, cassette tape material, and that spins inside that. So it's pretty simple technology. In fact, nothing much has changed, really. We're all using the same kind of jazz, really. Now what kind of box we put, put it in. Either you're reading it with a magnet, you're reading it with a stylus, or you're reading it with a laser. It's, you know, whatever. Spell check. B-bug software. Spell check dictionary. For the BBC Micro, it could be useful. I always need my spelling checked. Soft selector. 40 track formatting and utilities. Pace disk systems. Amcom. Ooh, DFS. This could be useful. Um, I've just realised something, by the way. If you've got a BBC Micro and you want to use the uh, disk utilities and all of this lot, you might have to have a BBC ROM. Let me just check something. And as if by magic, this is really useful because here are uh, two ROMs, the AMCOM DFS, so that's the disk filing system ROM, and here is an AMCOM NFS for network filing system. So we do need a DFS ROM and we can use a disk drive. So basically to use that floppy disk drive, I'll probably have to pop that into my machine anyway, just to give it the ability to you know even understand what a floppy drive is. But whoo good, isn't it? Good we have the stuff. If you keep enough stuff Oh, I'm going to say crap. If you keep enough crap lying around for long enough, sometimes it does get useful again to have it. So, writer for BBC 40 track shift and break to boot. 
And again, more of this uh, travel agent, air traffic controller thing. Let's see what that is. Tracker Plus. I wonder what Tracker Plus is. It's probably not music. Could it be? Budget programs. Work user. Word user. Label master. Wordwise. Wwise. Don't know what that is. GB Limited Travel. Wordwise. There's a lot of travel. I mean, do you think this was a BBC Micro that belonged to a travel agent, perhaps? <gasps> oh, how cool is this? The Teletext Screen Editor. <gasps> Stock check. Scoop. And look, this is BT, the old BT logo. Look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The, B B the British Telecom Education Service. Computers in the curriculum. I love it. God, this is so nostalgic. Anyone born at that time, I tell you. Card game, 40 track, patience. I'll need patience. Again, another one. M micro work travel agent, air traffic control. They loved it. So many copies. Wordwise Plus, MB Software, Mouse Drivers. And if that is for literally for a BBC mouse, it would be for the AMX mouse. And I do have in uh, somewhere a trackball, which I don't know, but might be AMX compatible. It's definitely it's a BBC trackball. You can use it for Missile Command. That would be interesting to know if that works with that one. That's a weird way of doing the old label, isn't it? Modification and control. Control op operasting operasting system for IBM PC DOS 3.1 and 3.11. They spell operating system correctly this way, here, but not there. Cause I'm not lying. Have a look. That's definitely not how you spell operating, and I'm pretty sure it was meant to be. Uh, yeah, interesting. There's a DOS disk there. We might fire that up. Ah, ha, ha. MS DOS 3.3. There we go. You're very useful. Thanks for that. I actually have uh, machines that will just, tr I will try that in because finding a five and a quarter boot disk now is pretty difficult. And of course, the um, Sharp um, X68000 that you've been seeing me playing with recently, that also uses floppies. It'd be interesting to see if they can read these disks too. So, T text, hopefully that's teletext. Oh, won't it be cool if some of these are like those data blast, you know, informations from back in the past and we can go through and see what people are up to? Circuit Designer, it's a boot disk as well. You can get that on Mail Merge Program. And again, the dubious instructions of stolenness. Spell Trek Dictionary and Spell Trek 80. So there we go, that is my box of the finest Dell Boy style hooky software for the BBC Micro and a few floppy. I'm just gonna, just gonna arrange these now. Let's see if I can actually get the lid on before I go on to my next item. The next and final item, the item you have all there that does seal up nicely you've been waiting for and i'm just going to put that on actually i've got a um deck vt100 down there that i want to show you but i'm not ready to show you yet but i'm going to open this envelope show you something this it's got an accompanied letter with it it's a lovely letter and um dear dr armstrong do you want to read it along with me it's really lovely and handwritten. Once again, thank you very much for your purchase and payment. Hope you are pleased with your purchase. Best regards, Barry. Well, Barry, I am very pleased with my purchase because my purchase today is part of a prize, a prize fund. Uh, because I've reached my 12,000 users and uh, subscribers, smash that like button if you like what you see, etc. Um, I've got to show you this, and it is uh, going out to one of you. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to probably frame it and do something glamorous with it, but here we go. Da, da, da. Yes, a signed picture from the lovely Pam St. Clement who is, of course, Pat Butcher on EastEnders. I say who is. I haven't watched EastEnders for a million years. She might still be in it, might not. I really don't know. And it's her lovely visage, and there's a bit of uh, there's a bit of um, varnish or something on there. I've tried to get rid of it, but it kind of matted up the gloss. I thought, I'd better not touch that. Let's not damage this beautiful piece. And it's uh, basically taken on a piece of photographic paper. Um, there's no... Uh, as far as I can tell, at least, there's no markings on the back to tell you if it's a Polaroid or Konica, but it's it's a good quality piece. This is a good quality piece there. 
And um, yeah, one of you lovely, lucky uh, subscribers is going to win this. Um, and I'm thinking of framing it. Now, something that happened recently was that I was informed that Pam St. Clement lives in my town. Now, I did not know this, I promise you. And um, because actually, to be honest, this was during a live stream. Andrew Dalton said, haha, this is on eBay. You should buy it. So I did buy it for the... <laughs> I thought it would be nice to give away. But I since found out, after telling someone locally, uh, I'm going to do this thing with this thing of Pants and Clement because I need a frame. And I was asking him about the frame. It's a custom size. You can't get a frame this size. Look at it. Um, and they said, yeah, didn't you know if Pam St. Clement lives locally? I see her shopping in Waitrose. And I was like, what? And then I thought, how meta would it be if I can get this framed and have it a picture with me and Pam's, Pam St. Clement holding up this picture, yeah? And uh, she uh, maybe signs that picture and then I frame that. So you win a picture of me with standing next to Pam St. Clement showing, uh, holding up a picture of her signed autograph because it was so meta. It's like that bloody movie when they were going like deeper, 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 like six levels deep and it takes 30 times longer every time you go down. That Inception movie. So that is the Inception prize. I'll be doing something with that. I'll probably be uh, doing a video on me framing that up. Now, I know this is rather long for an unboxing video, but thanks for sticking with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, just to let you know, I think I am definitely going to play Expo Manchester and play Expo Blackpool this year. What I'd really love you to do is comment down below if you're going to go to those expos and uh, shout out and let's meet up. And um, if there's enough people come along, I'll bring some stuff for you guys, just random stuff because I am trying to sort out the back office. And uh, it would be lovely to meet you in person. Or just find me there. Just find me in the expo and say, hi, Andrew, and then take a picture and, and tweet it and say, I found this guy in, in the expo. Yeah. Yeah, he was just walking around looking sad. Yeah, looking at Nintendos. And there you go. So have a lovely weekend, guys. I'm going to go back to bed, suck on a lem sip, and I will see you as soon as I am up on my feet again. All the best. Bye-bye.